Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast, and this is my review of Red to Kill, a Hong Kong thriller horror film from 1994 that earned a Category 3 rating by the Hong Kong Motion Picture Rating System. Now I've already covered some Cat 3 films on this channel, with separate review videos for Ricky O, The Story of Ricky, A Chinese Torture Chamber Story, uh, and Run and Kill. I covered the untold story, Dr. Lam, Eternal Evil of Asia, and The Untold Story Part 2 in my Asian Horror Playlist. And I also reviewed The Sleep Curse in a separate review video, which is a recent throwback to the Cat 3 films from the early 90s. Now in the West, we refer to Cat 3 as not only a rating designation, but also a subgenre of Hong Kong film, because we expect certain things from Cat 3 movies or specifically graphic violence and or excessive nudity. Now, Red to Kill is considered, by those who have seen it, to be one of the most memorable and impactful films of this kind. But does it really deliver? Well, the answer may lie in the plot synopsis itself. Listen to this. A mentally unhinged murderer rapist works at a home for the impaired and targets a mentally handicapped girl who is assigned under his care. So does this movie deliver as a Cat 3 film? Oh yes. Within the first five minutes, you will know that Red to Kill means business. Because the opening scene is a sufficiently creepy and disturbing attack on a young woman by this psycho. And as if that weren't enough, this scene is intercut with another sequence that introduces us to one of the female leads. A social worker who is assisting in a hostage situation that goes terribly wrong. <laughs> so this is Cat 3 Entertainment at its finest, folks. Now after that uncomfortable opening, if you choose to continue watching the film, and some people will turn the film off after the opening like 10 minutes, uh, we are introduced to our other female lead, a very kind, mentally handicapped girl whose father dies in an accident. And because of this, she is transferred to a facility and assigned a social worker, the lady from the opening scene, also nice lady. Unfortunately, these ladies are simply in the wrong place at the wrong time because this psycho teacher works at this particular home. And then the crap hits the fan. Now in an age nowadays where everyone gets offended by everything, Red to Kill is admirable in how legitimately and deliciously offensive it is on so many levels. Now how many movies have you seen that have graphic sexual assaults and violence that are inflicted upon a mentally handicapped woman? I mean, this is pretty revolting stuff, but that's the reason why films like this are made. You know, it allows the viewer to witness acts of depravity while safely knowing in the back of their mind that these are really just actors playing out their roles. And in that sense, Red to Kill delivers on what it's supposed to deliver. But I also think that this movie is purely entertaining from a filmmaking standpoint that kind of elevates it above something like Psycho the Snuff Reels, which was a badly made gore flick that succeeded in giving me an upset stomach, but failed to give me anything else. On the contrary, Red to Kill has some big time positives, one of which is Ben Ng. Now in this type of film, the portrayal of the killer is of paramount importance, and Ben Ng plays a very convincing lunatic, while at the same time avoiding a descent into silly annoyance. You know, this actor has appeared in a good number of films over the years, but this is by far his most impressive and powerful performance from what I've seen. Now, if you thought Anthony Wong was good in The Untold Story, you gotta check this guy out. I mean, it could be the most intense and intimidating performance I've ever seen in a Cat 3 film. Like, he's insane in this. The finale of this film is pretty satisfying throwdown to the death between the killer and some protagonists. You know, some Cat 3 films kind of whimper out near the end. This one does not. There are a few good character moments peppered throughout. There are. The best scene in this movie, which is also the most shocking and revolting in my opinion, takes place in a shower. It only involves one character in the scene, and it made my jaw drop. Like, it's, uh, that's a good scene. That's a good scene. Are there any flaws of this movie? Yeah. I mean, the script writing is basic stuff for the most part. It lacks any significant depth in terms of story or characters. However, I still found the dramatic stuff in between the shocks to be satisfactory 
and engaging on a certain level. You know, I'm never bored when I watch Red to Kill, that's for sure. So that means that, you know, it's properly edited and it keeps things moving in between like the most shocking moments. And there's, there is some tension there too uh, that I liked. The biggest obstacle for most viewers, let's be honest, will be the fact that this is a pretty depraved film. But it's also very thrilling and entertaining for viewers who like shocking or sleazy thriller horror movies. You know, if you enjoyed The Untold Story or any other Cat 3 film and you have not seen Red to Kill, you need to get on this, like, immediately. I highly recommend this for certain viewers, and you probably know who you are. Uh, if the plot synopsis alone turns you off, do not watch this movie. Now, Red to Kill is moderately available on Region 1 DVD in the United States, but it's way too expensive. I forgot what the DVD price was. I want to say like 60 bucks or something like that. It was ridiculous. Um, however, I did purchase the Region 2 Greek DVD, which I showcased, I think, in a recent or not too long ago DVD collection addendum video, which is much cheaper than the Region 1 release, and it has English subtitles. The problem is that it's dubbed in Mandarin instead of the original Cantonese. You know, I was, I was you know, when I started watching the film, it, it distracted me a little bit. But fortunately, the Mandarin dub is actually pretty good. I think it was dubbed around the year that it was made. Uh, so it, it goes, it blends in with the film. It doesn't feel like a, like a bad anime or a bad, bad kung fu movie or something. It actually, the dub is pretty good in this. And after I got used to it, it didn't really deter that much from the experience. So, you know, if you're desperate to check this movie out, uh, the Greek DVD release is an option. But remember, it's Region 2. And as always, I'll see you next time.